Hello there all, welcome to Yale Sacra. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about fluid effects in Maya. Recently, I got a comment by Hung Lee asking me how to create a hemisphere of clouds, basically a solid block hemisphere of clouds, like a bowl full of it. I was creating the video when I decided I'll also show you a bit of special effects using fluids and particles. So I'm going to show you how to create an effect like what you see on screen in Maya. So let's go ahead and get started. Hopefully you find it useful. Now here within Maya, I want to start with a few basics about 3D fluids. So I'll create an empty 3D fluid container. Let's turn off the grid. I'll put in a simple preset, a thick cloud puff. I'll replace it. So I have this. I want to look at the 3D view with texture on so I can see a bit more detail. I'll go up to the fluid container shape, enable voxels uh, to be square, and I'll increase the quality so I can see much more detail. The container itself is a bit distracting, so I'll go turn it to be only a bounding box. Now, I have a simple cloud puff cover in here. I want to basically break down and tell you what are the different things which have been set up so that it looks like a cloud puff. So first off, how the density is created. Density basically means what object would be visible by default. Uh, you don't actually need density to be visible, but that is a convention. So density is set to be a gradient, and it's set to be a constant gradient. What that means is that the entire fluid container is going to be filled with a constant amount of density. Now, the reason for this object to look like a sphere is actually down here under shading we have something called opacity. This tells exactly what's going to get rendered. So here opacity is set to be a center gradient which means it changes from the center of the entire container towards the outside. And here we can see the gradient is a bit different and the center it's set to be a complete opaque section and then as it comes towards the edges suddenly it drops off and becomes transparent. What that creates is a simple sphere because sphere has a constant radius all over. If I try changing this you can see that the entire gradient changes and it gives me different results. So uh, this is what we have. But let's just say I go ahead and um, I want to create this uh, cloud puff, but I want it to be filled in a simple bowl. I want it only at the bottom section. If I go ahead and change the center gradient to be, let's say, a Y gradient, immediately it fills into a bowl. But, as I just told you some time ago, the entire fluid container is full of fluid, full of density. Why exactly is it conforming into a simple sphere only at the base? The reason for that is here at the top, under shading, the initial options. The drop-off shape is set to be a sphere. What that means is that even though the container itself is a box, the fluid effects by general will make it look like it's a sphere. So if I change this to be a cube, you can see the entire cube gets filled out at the bottom. So a couple of things which they have done. First, density is set to be constant throughout. Then we have opacity, which if you change to different sections will give you different kinds of outputs, like y-axis gradient will give you a y-axis gradient. If we set it to the x-axis or y-axis, you get different axes. And then you have the container shape itself, which you can set to get different results. So here I have a simple cone. So here you can use this to create a simple bowl full of fluids. So that's basically most of the defaults. But what I want to actually create is a dynamic fluid with a specific shape I want and the kind of interactions which I can't really get using fluids. So let's see how exactly I can go about doing that using particles. So now here I'm in a new Maya scene and I'm going to start by creating a few particles. So I'll go to the particle menu and I'll go to create emitter. I'll go to the option box and let's start by going ahead and resetting all the settings. Uh, what I want to do is basically create a big ball full of particles. So that to be my basics to begin with. So under emitter type I'll set it to volume and then down here under volume shape I'll set it to be a sphere. Now once I've done this, I'll go just create. As you can see, a simple uh, sphere icon is created in the center. And now if I go hit play, it starts emitting particles in all directions. I'll turn off the grid. 
So what I want to do is just have a big ball of uh, ball of particles. I don't actually want them to move around. So there is this option called away from center. I'm going to zero that out on the particle emitter itself. And now going back and hitting play, you can see it just creates particles all throughout. I want hundreds of thousands of particles filling up the sphere very quickly. I don't want to co-play through every single frame. So to get it quickly, I'll just go ahead and increase a number here in the emission rate. So now if I just go ahead one frame, I get a lot more particles. If I just go ahead a couple of more frames, it just increases very quickly. So let me go ahead and increase this a lot more. Okay, I have a lot of particles created. Now, I want these particles to last when I come back to the first frame, meaning I just want the particles. But if I do that now, if I come back to the initial state, you can see everything is gone. Again, I have to re-emit these particles. I don't really want to keep doing that every time. So now I'll just select the particles, go to solvers and set initial state to be for selected. This time if I come back to the first frame, you can see the particles still stay the same. And if I go ahead again, you can see more particles start getting emitted. So what I'm going to do now is because I don't really need additional particles, I'll just select the emitter and delete it. So now I just have a big ball of particles in my scene. But having a simple ball of particles is of pretty much no use. So I'll again select these particles and under fields, I have something called a turbulence field. I'll apply this field. You can see that there's a field applied, turbulence field, and when it's selected, the particles turn pink. So now if I go ahead and hit play, you can see the particles move around in random directions. I want to increase a bit of randomness here, so let me go ahead and increase the frequency, let's say 1.5, play, and that gives me a much more interesting shape. Also I'll increase the level of noise and set it to quadratic, so it's a bit more softer with a lot more smaller detail. So I have this kind of uh, a randomness which is created using particles. But the problem is, again, if I go back to my first frame, all the detail is lost. So what I need to do is once I have reached the level on the particles, a particular pattern or shape which I like, I need to select them, go to solvers, set initial state for selected. Now going back to the first frame, the particles still stay the same. But if I go hit play again, the turbulence field still acts on them. So I need to go to the turbulence field and delete it. Going back and hitting play, you can see the particles are just moving forward. I don't really want them to move anywhere. I just want them to stay where they are. So if I go to particle shape options, I have options for it being dynamic. If I turn off is dynamic and go ahead and play, you can see the particles no longer move. They're just a static bunch of points now, which is very useful for what I'm about to do. So let's just say I wanted my fluids to conform to this particular shape. I want my fluids to look exactly like this. So to do that, I'll go create a fluid 3D container. So here I have it. The container is a little bigger than my particles. So I'll just select the particles and scale them up till they fill up the container a little. Now let's position the, contain the fluid particles in a proper place. Okay. Now I can select the particles and select the fluid container at the same time, go under fluid effects, add edit contents, and here emit from objects. I'll go to the option box, let's reset the whole thing. By default, you use surface objects like polygons or nerves to emit fluids into a container. But now what I'm using is just points, nothing but particles. So emission type cannot be surface. I need to set it to Omni. Next, I have different kinds of attributes which this is trying to put into the container. I'm going to go ahead and just hit apply and close for now to have the defaults. Now, coming back to the initial frame and going, stepping ahead one frame, you can see a lot of these white dots are created. Let me go ahead, select the particles and just hide them for now. And I'll turn on uh, 3D. So you can see I'm getting some kind of 3D details in the fluid. If I go back and hit play, you can see the fluid gets emitted and then it's interacting with the container. It's dynamic. What I want to do is just have the fluids emitted in my container like this. But there is not a lot of detail. It's all blotchy. To get additional detail, of course, going back to fluid shape, I'll 
keep the voxel square, increase it to a level which I can actually appreciate, go back and play, and you can see a lot of this is created, it's very soft and easy to see shape. Now, what I want this to do is go ahead and be a static fluid. I don't want the fluid to move and mess everything up. So first off, I'll go one or two frames ahead once I have a lot of density. I'll select the fluid container itself and I want this shape to be maintained from the first initial state. So same thing which we did with the particles. I want to set an initial state with this dynamic object, this fluid container. I'll go to fluid effects and here I'll tell set initial state. Now if I come back to my first frame you can see it's still the same. But if I go ahead a couple of more frames the particles are still emitting density. I don't want that. So if I select the container I can go back to its fluid emitter and here I can turn off rate per particle. So back and play you can see none of the particles are being emitted but the problem is the fluid itself is dynamic it's moving up which I don't really want it to do so what I can do instead is go to fluid shape and turn off a few options so first off let's say this is going to be some sort of nebula which is outside so obviously it does not get affected by gravity so I can turn that off but if I come back and hit play it still is moving up a little not as much as it was before but it's still moving up a little. The reason for that is because if I come to content details here under density I have something called buoyancy. Buoyancy is a force which makes things which are less dense move up uh, and here within Maya we had to tell whether or not it moves up. So here buoyancy I'll set it to zero. Next if I come back up you can see the temperature or fuel or nothing else is set to dynamic grid so that basically solves everything for me. I can go back and hit play. You can see that the fluid still is moving up a little. This is because when we set the initial state the velocity was also set. So if you did not want the velocity set under fluid effects while setting the initial state you can turn off velocity. But now it's already set and there is no point again readjusting the whole thing. Instead what I'll do is under dynamic simulation I have something called damp. Damp is the force which stops objects from moving. I'll go increase it to a whole value of 1 and now going back and hitting play you can see the uh, fluid moves only one frame and then totally stops. So I'm okay with that. I'll just go ahead to a certain frame when it's completely stopped and then set this to be my actual initial state. Now that it's done, coming back and hitting play, you can see the fluid does not move anymore. Okay, so I got this fluid moving across and according to density there is a bit of uh, color coming across. Now, if I want to add in a bit of random colors, I can go ahead and set that up. But before that, let's see how exactly how we can animate like as if it's being burnt out or some kind of an effect. For this, I need to make use of particles again. So, for this, I'll create another set of particles. So, again, I'll go create an emitter. I have an emitter created. Again, it's a sphere. I'll turn off the away from center on this and also over here rates I'll go increase it to a big number and also another thing to note is if I go ahead and emit particles oops if I go ahead and emit particles and select these you can see the origin of the particles is at the grid level because the particles don't really know that the emitter is over there you'll again have to move the pivot and all that stuff so instead I'll just go ahead keep it at the same origin itself. So I'll get rid of the translate Z and make sure I've isolated only the emitter and particles so I can just see what's happening here. Okay so back play. So I have a lot of particles which are created and now I'm going to select the particles solver initial state set for selected. Now emitter I can delete that. Selecting the particles themselves on the first frame now I'll go field turbulence and now that I've applied the turbulence field go back you can see it creates a bit of randomness but what I want now is this randomness actually to go eat out the entire fluids so let's come out of the uh, isolation here I'll move out let's take the particles initially I'll move them down here at the base I'll actually increase the size of these particles 
Uh, don't scale them randomly in different directions, which might affect the dynamics. Okay, and now I'll go ahead and set the turbulence field down here so it creates a bit of randomness in the particles. And now I can apply a uniform field to move the entire particles up. So now under fields, I'll go, let's say, set a radial and I'll move this radial field below. Now, once I go ahead and hit play, you can see the particles just move up, which is pretty good. Now what I wanted to do is wherever the particles come, I want this fluid to be eaten up. I want it to be gone. I want it destroyed or whatever. So to do that, again, same thing. I'll select the particles. I'll select the fluid container and not the turbulence field. Here on the fluid effects, add edit content, I'll go to emit from objects. Uh, already most of the options are set, so I'm gonna go ahead and just hit apply and close. This time, there is a small change I'm going to make. Here you can see density is set to one. Instead, if I take it down, it can only go till the value of zero. But because Maya actually accepts floating point values, I can give negative values. I'm going to give 0 0.1, a minus 0 0.1. Look at what it does now. If I hit play, as soon as the particles touch the fluids, they start eating them out. So particles, I'll just hide them for now. Go back and hit play the particles are beginning to eat up the fluid effect itself. So it does slow down a little because the number of particles and the amount of emission which is happening and all of that. So you might want to make sure that your system can handle such amount of detail if you're giving so many particles. Obviously I did not have to use so many particles. I did not think about it before. So yeah, happens. Okay, so let me increase the frequency so there is a lot more randomness and the radial field, I'll decrease the magnitude a little so it's a bit more softer. I'll go hit play so there's a bit more randomness to what is happening here. So turbulence, magnitude, oops, let's say about 10 and no attenuation. Also, to get uh, additional effect, I can go back to my fluids. Here I have the emitter 2, which has a negative density. I'll just go set it to minus 1, which just makes sure the uh, effect is happening much faster. So hitting play, you can see the fluids is getting eaten much faster. And the uh, eating is happening at a much random level rather than static. So that gives you a much better effect. Now. Wherever the fluid is being eaten, I want it to have different color. So that is dynamic coloration of my fluids. So that's one of the reasons I did not actually color my fluids in the beginning. So here, I'll come to my emitter 2 and this time I'll tell emit fluid color. Immediately it asks me if I want to set the fluid color to be dynamic. I'll set it to dynamic. You can see the fluid color just changed. And now I can emit a different color I want for the fluid. I'll go ahead and set, let's say, uh, bright cyan. Coming back, let me go ahead, hide the particles again. I'll go back, hit play, and once the particles touch, you can see it turns the fluids blue in color and then eats it up. So that's a pretty neat trick of uh, uh, getting particles to actually transfer different details onto my fluids. Also, along with this, if I come to my actual fluid shape itself, under my shading now, I can go ahead and give it different kinds of colors. And the only color I can give is dependent on incandescence. So here temperature field is not actually working much because I'm not actually set up temperature. You could probably create another set of particles. I'll make sure they are only adding heat into your fluid container and use temperature to drive the color. But for now, I'll just set it to be a center gradient. So whatever is in the center of the fluid container is yellow and whatever is out is red. Or instead, I can set it to be a density gradient. So you can see it looks more like a fireball. But having the exact shape, uh, color of the density it does not actually always look very good. So instead, I'll apply a bit of texture to this. So I'll texture incandescence. I need to turn on texturing here to be able to look at that. So now I have some kind of detail going on. Also, I'm going to change the opacity a little bit so I can pull it in and out. Just trying to get more uh, sharper details in certain places. 
I can also come up to my uh, container density, change the density value. Uh, remember that the more amount of particles are emitting density, the higher the density level. So the density on the inside of the fluid can actually be somewhere around 10. So if you wanted to actually confirm with the actual levels given here, you need to set this to a lower value so you can get the exact effect you're looking for from here. Anyway, I'm not going to go too much into it. I'll also texture opacity so it gives me a bit more randomness there. Going back to my initial stage, this is my nebula or whatever I have. I can give it different colors. So let's say I wanted to have a slightly different coloration there. Obviously, the brighter the color, the darker the fluid looks. So take care to make sure you know exactly what you want. So I have something there. And also to get more 3D-ness out of this, I can come down to lighting and tell self-shadow. This adds a bit more dimension to your fluids themselves. And um, I can give a bit of diffusion in the shadow which makes things look more bit softer. And also here under opacity I'll go increase the amount of variations happening in the noise texture. Now if I go back and hit play you should be able to see the kind of effect I have. Where the particles start coming in and eating up the fluid the color is going to be bluish. And uh, to look at the final effect which we have we can go ahead and just hit render. Maya is going to take a bit of time to render this and it's going to give you the kind of result you're looking for. Also, remember that the brighter the incandescence level you have set up, the harder it is going to be to look at the color your particles are emitting. So one of the best ways to go around it is if you go to your actual emitter, here under the emission parameters, you can actually emit values which are greater than 1. Again, uh, pertaining to the same thing in Maya. So I can increase the value which it's emitting, come back, hit play, and once it emits, you can see the effect much, much more clearly because it's that much more brighter. You're basically making the fluids glow. So you can see the particles are actually eating away at the fluids now. Now, the problem with whatever we have created just now is that if we want to increase the quality of the fluids, we actually have to go and uh, increase uh, ex using the extend fluids or edit the resolution. We can't actually just go edit any details in the container itself because if we do that, we are going to lose all the initial states that we have set up. So anyway, this is the effect which I wanted to show you how to get and we pretty much have that. I'll get rid of a few details here and uh, just take a play blast to show you what we have. So let me get these colors to be darker just to make it a little interesting. Just adding a little bit more randomness to the whole thing. Increasing ratio increases smaller detail which you have in your scenes. So increasing frequency increases the amount of noisiness you have in the whole section. Inflection gives you a bit of um, cutting out. Uh, basically any value which goes above 1 or below 0 it actually changes that. Uh, it's a bit harder to explain uh, without math so I'm going to ignore. Okay, so let's say I have this kind of a uh, section created. I'm just going to go ahead take a play blast and see what it looks like. Let's say only about uh, 80 frames should do it. I'll uh, change the display to none so that I only have my fluids visible. Okay, so we have this. I'll go ahead take a play blast and be back with you. Okay, so here we have the final and as you can see uh, the fluid effects is being eaten out by the particles and it's a bit random, looks a bit more natural and if you render it out it will, it will look uh, way better. And uh, one of the main things I've noticed when people render is that the fluid effect looks a bit too choppy. So I'm just going to show you a little bit about how exactly you can increase the quality of your fluid. Uh, so if I go ahead and render this level you can see I have the fluid effect but you can see it looks a bit more blockish on the sides and also here at the base you have a lot of noise which is coming across. We want to avoid all these problems. So again I'll select the fluid effect, come down to the bottom completely and here 
we have render stats and uh, I kind of forget where elements are coming in from so give me a minute please yeah we have shading quality and shading quality is what may tells the computer how much time it should spend behind these fluid effects one of the first thing I'm going to change is the render interpolator I'm going to change it to be smooth and once I've set this to smooth let's go ahead take a render and see the difference you can immediately see that most of the blockishness, uh, most of the aliasing like artifacts from the 3D voxels is now gone. The fluid looks way more smooth and it's harder to see the blockish results. So even if your fluid is a bit lower resolution, setting, setting it to smooth, though it increases render time, will give you a look which actually looks like the fluid is much higher resolution. Uh, it's not that great all the time, but uh, it depends on how exactly you can go about it. So that's one of the first things. Next, to get rid of the noise itself, there are two elements. One is a quality and next is a contrast tolerance. Quality tells how much spend it, uh, time it has to spend calculating the fluid itself. Contrast tolerance talks about anti-aliasing, which I'm not going to go into. Let's just go ahead, increase the quality to 2 and I'll only render this portion to show you the result. So now you can see that increasing quality has decreased noise over here a little but over here in this particular section the noise is still high. Noise increases mostly when you have a uh, sudden changes or a lot of detail in one place. Uh, this usually happens in fluid where the opacity is very low so increasing quality usually helps. But also contrast tolerance by decreasing this will also help. But I'm just going to increase the uh, shading quality let's say about 5 and let's see the difference in result. Now you can see that most of the noise is reduced, a lot more quality has come in, but it does look like there is a bit of banding issues going on. The main issue for this is because of the way I have set up the fluid to make a outer coat of fluids on this container. So anyway, that's pretty much the uh, result which we were looking for of uh, fluids uh, which are being driven by particles and getting different results. Now the way you can use this is uh, you can also use particles to generate heat, you can use the particles to generate color, to, uh, any kind of uh, different effects right here. Even you can use particles to act like your fuel which are being lit on fire using fluids. One of the best ways you can use fluids is actually to generate two different particles which have different colors and are mixing in together with a bit of diffusion in color itself. So under our color options for the fluid shape, we actually have option for color diffusion, meaning how much should the color mix around. So if you keep this option on and have two particles emitting different colors, they will actually mix together. So now if you have a container which is supposed to have two different colored gases mixing. Just create a single fluid container, two different emitters, two different particles, both different colors and they are mixing in together and that's pretty much it. You can pretty much get any kind of effect using this method. So yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to talk to you guys about. If you have any doubts, queries or questions, you can always put them in the comment section or you can mail me. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you found this video useful. I'll see you in the next one. Hopefully with more Houdini stuff.